All right, I think we are live. Hello, and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be talking about shifting from looking for the right thing to do all the time to looking for the most supportive thing to do, the most pragmatic thing to do, the best thing to do in terms of the actual options we have available to us. Okay, so <clears throat> this is one of my very favorite things to talk about. And this is actually something that we cover a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot in the mystery school. So if you like this topic and this is interesting to you and you want to take it deeper and all that stuff, definitely check out the mystery school because this is one of the main themes of school is figuring out how to separate how to live with the idea of that we can actually separate out what culture is telling us we should do, what everyone says is the right thing to do, that deep need in us to feel like we're being accepted and we're being approved of, separating that out from what's actually going to get us good results because a lot of the time what society and what culture and what family and what institutions tell us is the right thing to do, the thing that's going to get us approved of, the thing that's going to make us feel safe socially, isn't going to give us the results that we want. And then we end up feeling really confused and really conflicted a lot of the time because, again, we're caught between these kind, this kind of rock and a hard place of doing what is socially acceptable and not feeling good, but not giving us what we want and doing what would actually give us what we want and that not feeling good because it gets us rejected. And then at the same time, learning how to be a good learner, which is something that our culture is really bad at fostering in us. And actually I think our culture really works against helping us to learn from our experiences, helping us to learn from what we're going through. And so then again, we get stuck in patterns of behavior and doing things and feeling shame and blame and feeling like shit about ourselves because we're not getting the results that we want. We're in pain. Maybe we're not even able to do what everyone wants us to do. And we can't seem to figure out a new different way of being because again, we were never taught how to learn. So this is what... Again, I say like this is basically what the mystery school is all about is deprogramming this stuff is deprogramming you from the idea that you have to do what is going to get you approved of deprogramming you from the idea that being rejected is like the worst thing that could possibly happen deprogramming you from the idea that making mistakes or things not going how you thought they were going to go isn't a failure on you, isn't something that you are doing wrong, isn't something that is bad about you, and learning how to learn from real reality and learning how to regulate our nervous systems enough that we can do that, that's what the school is about. So if you want to join, you can join anytime. We have monthly meetings. This is basically what the school is all about. So if you like the free content, I think you'll love the, the school content as well. So again, like I said, this is one of my favorite things to talk about because I feel like, especially in our world today, where there's so much social media, there's so much connection to people's opinions, there's so much connection to what everyone thinks is the right thing, and the fact that we live in a world where we are deeply inundated with the opinions of so many people. Okay, where we are constantly being flooded with this is what this group of people thinks and this is what this group of people think and this is what these people are saying and this is what these people are doing. It is really overwhelming for our systems in a way that, again, pretty much anyone, any human for all of human history would never have experienced. The fact that we are so connected to so many different people and so many different ways of living, it partially we do, I think, need to understand that we have not like evolved 
to be in this situation and for it to not be completely overwhelming, okay? Because again, we have to remember that in our childhoods and also for all of humanity forever, the idea of fitting in was the same thing as surviving. Being approved of and accepted by your caregivers, being approved of and accepted by the groups that we lived within was how we survived, right? Being rejected by our caregivers in that temporary codependent reality of our childhoods where we could not provide for ourselves, where we could not make choices for ourselves. We were not autonomous. We did not know how the world worked enough. We didn't have enough skills or understanding or any of these things to provide for or to support ourselves. We absolutely needed to be approved of by our caregivers in order to be safe. And that taught us a lot about what we had to do and what we had to be and what we couldn't do and what we couldn't be and all of these things that may or may not have been in alignment with real reality that may or may not be what is actually going to get us what we need and what we want to feel good as adults in this life. But it was, again, a program that got programmed in very, very early on that if we are not approved of, if we are not liked, if we are not accepted, we are not safe. And then culturally and historically, this was also true. People did not survive on their own. We as a humanity have always survived in groups. We have always thrived in groups. Safety was always found, pretty much, in community, in working together with the group that you were in because survival is complex and it's hard and it's confusing. And creating systems and creating ways of beings and structures that actually worked to help get us out of the food chain the way that we've gotten out of the food chain required a group effort. And so for a very, very, very long time, it was a very, very, very real reality, even more than it is right now, that to be rejected was to die. To be rejected was to not be safe. And that was, again, our personal experience as human beings growing up in our childhoods, all of us experienced that. And then that's a group humanity thing from all of humanity passing on these experiences forward that being kicked out of the group was really, really bad for survival. So we all have a deep, deep, deep core desire, a deep core wound, if you will, a deep core program that tells us that to be rejected is to be unsafe. That no matter what, rejection is like the worst thing we could experience because that seemed to be the most antagonistic to our capacity to survive. So again, now that we live in a world where we have so much information and so many different people's opinions and so much coming at us in the ways of being aware of how many people could be accepting or rejecting us at any given time, this, this focus that we all have on fitting in and, and doing what is right by the group that we have kind of identified with, no matter how much we consider ourselves to be, you know, free thinkers or independent or whatever it is, I think a lot of us can admit deep down that we are afraid when people reject us, that we are afraid when people tell us that we're wrong, that, that it is a difficult thing to go through when we feel like people don't like us. It feels unsafe. And, and again, we need to understand that that is a biological thing that is occurring in all of us. Yeah, like no matter how many spiritual teachers try and teach you how to like not care what people think about you, I don't know that we can ever get to a point where we don't care. Like where there isn't that, there isn't going to be like an emotional pull inside of us that says, oh no, I'm not okay. 
when people don't like me and that is constantly kind of looking for and scanning for what's going to be most approved of by others. We can get to a point where we don't live like that anymore, where we don't, we don't follow that every single time. We can get to a point where we can soothe ourselves and we can definitely like say, okay, it's okay, right? Like I can be rejected and I'm not going to die and I can keep going forward and doing these other different things anyways. And we can absolutely work with these triggers and work with these fears and work with these programs so that they don't control our lives. I really think that that's absolutely possible. That is proven. But again, to get to a point where we don't feel it, where there's like literally no sense of like, oh no, if I get rejected, I'm not going to be safe and I'm not going to be okay. I don't think that any of us are ever going to get there. Because like I said, I, I feel like that is a biological reality that has been passed down and passed down and passed down and passed down and something that we experience so early on in our lives that that, that program I don't think is ever going to be overridden as in like gotten rid of, okay? So now with that, if we can really understand that a lot of us feel deeply triggered by feeling like we're not going to be accepted and feeling like we're not going to be approved of, that that is like a normal human thing to be afraid of that. And if we can start to understand that a lot of the time when we are trying to make decisions in our lives, when we are trying to figure out what the best thing to do is moving forward, when we are in a position where we're sick in our body and we don't know why and we don't know what to do, when we are in a position where we're at work and we're struggling to have the success we want, we're struggling with with it not feeling good to be at work and we're feeling like we can't find the success or the the health or the balance or the whatever it is that everyone else seems to have <laughs> when we're in our relationships and we're having the same fights over and over again or we're feeling really lonely or we're feeling like we don't know how to connect with people when we're in these situations where we're in pain and life is not going how we want it to and life does not feel good a lot of us, the first instinct, right, is to look for what is everybody else doing? What is the right answer by the group of people that I have deemed to be the people who have the answers? Okay, so again, Martha Beck talks about this. It's called the generalized other. And all of us have a group of people or a couple of people. Usually it's going to be our caregivers and the early authority figures that we had in our lives and then sprinkled in uh, people who had you know a, a big impact on us and the way that we viewed the world as we became adults but a lot of the time it's a mix of our primary people those primary people who taught us what the world was and then like I say a few people who maybe we've added in later on in life who we we have taken their opinion of what a good life is and what a right life is and what we should be doing and what we shouldn't be doing. And we've painted that as this is what everyone thinks and this is what everyone believes and this is like, this is the right way to live life. So then even when we are cognitively and consciously trying to do things in a different way, even when we are facing our problems and we're trying to do right by these, this generalized other definition of right, and we're either not having the success, it doesn't feel good, we don't want to do it, we have some sort of cognitive intellectual understanding that it's not the best way or the right way or the only way. We still feel deeply not okay when we are going in a different direction. We still feel really scared and really unsafe and really shaken when we either are going our own way and we're not even necessarily receiving feedback. It just feels really bad and really scary to reject the right that we were handed, even if we can intellectually feel like we have a better thing it still feels in our bodies very, very scary to go and do something else. And we might constantly be feeling like we're doing the wrong thing, like we're not doing what we should be doing. Because again, 
it's not based on the results we're actually getting. It's based on that feedback of are you fitting in to what the right thing is by these people that you learned what the right thing was from. Okay, so in other words, we can be the kind of people who say, okay, I'm not going to go down the career path that my caregivers wanted me to go down. I'm not going to do the same thing that all of my peers are doing in terms of finding a relationship or settling down and having kids or whatever it is that we were conditioned is the right thing to do in life. Yeah? We might have that cognitive, okay, I don't agree with that. I can see all the reasons why that's not what I want to do. I'm going to go and do something else. And two things usually happen here. Number one is when we start to do our own thing, it does not go how we thought it was going to go. Right? We leave the job. We go out to have different relationships. We don't buy the house. We don't do whatever. And initially we are not going to like step into another way of life that just like perfectly works out we're not going to like find another perfect career immediately and have complete clarity on what we should be doing with our lives we're not going to have perfect relationships that are just different from you know traditional or typical relationships we're not going to just step into a perfect life where everything is working out perfectly and us doing something different than what we were trained to do is obviously working immediately. Okay? So the first thing that's going to happen is that we're going to feel like we made a mistake. We're going to feel like doing something different, even if going along with what everyone else is doing feels horrible and did not get us the results that we wanted and we were really struggling in that work environment or we were really struggling in those relationships or it felt awful and we changed for a reason. We're going to be like, see, doing something different is just as bad or even worse because now I don't have a predictable, I understand what's going to happen here. Now I don't even have the approval of at least I'm trying to do the thing that everyone else is doing and that everyone else approves of because remember that's what we think, it's everyone. And now I'm just doing my own thing and I have to figure it out and it's hard and scary and I don't know what I'm doing and nothing's working out and this feels worse. Okay, so that's the first thing that's going to happen is all that fear is going to happen and then we're going to get feedback from the people around us. People are going to tell us that you're doing the wrong thing, you shouldn't be doing this, this alternate way isn't the way and look at right? Look at your results. They're not good. You're not getting the results that you thought you were going to get. Your way isn't actually better. Crabs in the bucket thing. It's going to feel really scary, right? And then on top of that, even if we were to continue on and we get to a place where we start to get better results, we start to figure it out. We're, we start to figure out a new career that actually is making us money and that we do enjoy and it's totally outside of what we what our caregivers or our generalized other thinks is great but we're getting results we're getting success maybe we move away and we find a, a new place to exist a new different culture that feels better for us and we're finding different friends and we're finding different community and we're finding it just a different way of life and it is working for us to a degree, like we start to get good results, we start to see that there is some positive benefit to these choices that we've made. It's still very common to experience feeling like we're still doing everything wrong and this isn't safe and this isn't okay and I'm still fucking everything up and nothing is secure and nothing is safe and, and we again can start to just really feel like we're being judged and we're being criticized and like everyone thinks what we're doing is wrong, bad and stupid and evil or whatever it is even though we've found other people who agree with us even though we're getting better results than we were getting before it can still feel like we're doing the wrong thing all the time okay so that's the, that's the sort of what it can look like even when we're consciously choosing to go and do something different it can still feel like we're not safe and we're not okay because we have that deep core 
conditioning that has told us this was the right way to be, this is the right thing to do, this is how we should be, and you're not being that. And therefore, you are going to be rejected. And that program that's deep inside of us, it says, if you get rejected, you will die. Will, cloud, whatever results we're getting in real life. Okay, so that is something we need to be aware of. That we can be getting good results from the new different choices we are making and still feel like we're not safe and we're not good and we're not good enough and what we're doing is wrong and bad, like these deep like self-hate things, because that's our protective instinct, that's our programmed self trying to get us to go back to do what we were trained we needed to do to be loved and accepted, because that is what that part of us thinks we have to do to survive and be okay. Okay, so a lot of us are gonna experience a real uptick in our levels of self-hate and how much we're nitpicking ourselves and feeling like we're failing and feeling like we're doing the wrong thing and feeling like we suck and we are bad and we are horrible and like what we are doing is deeply flawed and not okay. The more we stray, from what we were trained was the right way to be. No matter how painful that right way to be was, no matter how bad the results you get are from following that right way to be, that uptick in self-hate and that uptick in self-doubt is coming because that protective mechanism part of you that says the best way to survive is to fit in is coming up to say, you are not doing what it takes to fit in. You are going the wrong direction. You are going to die. And the thing you need to change and the thing you need to fix in order to save yourself is your behavior and changing yourself back into what everyone would approve of. And then like I said, because we now live in a world where we are so connected to so many different opinions and we are so connected to so many different groups of people. And it can feel like, okay, I need to be accepted by them and I need to be accepted by them and I need, because that deep sense of self inside that says, the more we are rejected, the more unsafe we are. And then we're, confront, we're bombarded with all these different opinions and different ways that we could do things. We can start to constantly feel like we're doing something wrong and constantly feel like we are not safe because we are being rejected by someone at all times. No matter, like, to the degree that we are kind of assuming these right ways of being as part of our blueprint for what we should be doing. And then the big, big, I think, nail in the coffin on this one is that in our culture and in our society, it is very, 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 very dangerous in terms of, thank you, I'm so glad you're here, thank you for saying that, um, that it is very, 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 it makes it very unsafe to try things, to fail, to figure things out as we go, and to learn as we go, right? Our culture, pretty much all of us, have grown up in an environment where if we are going to do something different, if we are going to go outside of the norm in any way, we are going to be hyper criticized and hyper looked at and all of the flaws are going to be pointed out again because everyone is going to be triggered and activated by that. As a human race, we have to remember we have that deep internal program that tells us that same equals safe. Everyone doing what I'm doing equals safety. Everyone being the same as me equals we all agree equals we're all going to be okay. So again, even if what we're all doing isn't getting us good results, even if what we're all doing means we're all kind of miserable, like, have you ever noticed, like, people in religious groups or people in any kind of group 
where the the doctrine or the the discipline the way of being everyone's pretty miserable like no one's really happy no one's really getting the results that they want but the thing that they're getting from that um is approval and acceptance of the group they're getting that community feeling of like but we're all doing this and we're all doing the same thing and we all agree and that actually makes us feel like we're going to be safe that makes us feel like life is going good even when the results we're getting from following the group are not good that's how powerful it is for us to feel like fitting in is the most important thing in terms of survival and getting good results. We will ignore reality. We will do the same things over and over and over again. We will continue on with patterns that have proven themselves to be ineffective. And we will continue we will continue to justify why what we're doing is the best thing to do. Why what we're doing is the only right thing to do and how what everyone else is doing is wrong and bad and evil and worse than us because again we want to feel like we're safe in doing what we're doing and what everyone else is doing so then when one person changes or one person does something different if you are that person we're immediately going to look to them and be like do not prove that what i'm doing isn't the best thing to do do not go out and get better results do not go out and burst this bubble that i have that even if what i'm doing is leading to suffering and it's painful and it's not working to the degree that we think it it's going to work it is the best thing everything else is worse and so we want to prove that by tearing down anyone who does anything different we will want to prove that by tearing down anyone who does anything different anyone who strays from the group So then again, we might be the kind of people who are doing something different. And then of course, like I said, when we, whenever we first leave the group that we're in, whenever we first leave what we were trained to do, whatever we decide we're going to figure things out on our own, or we just have a situation where we just don't fit in with what normal is, right? Where maybe normal works perfectly fine for some people. Like there are some people who can get those kinds of jobs and work them and it's fine. There are some people who can eat a certain way or live a certain way that's normal and they get pretty good results and it's fine for them. And then there are some people who try and do that and it just really doesn't work. They cannot get those same results. It's much more painful for them. We're going to step out, we're going to do something different. And like I said, it's almost a guarantee. that as you do that you're going to make mistakes you're going to run into situations where things get worse before they get better where you have to struggle and you have to try things and you have to fail and you have to be criticized and people are not going to agree with you and you're not going to have good results to show for your doing something different And again, that's going to make us feel even more triggered, even more unsafe, even more like we're not okay, and like we're fucking everything up, and like we are bad and we are wrong and we are shameful. Because again, my point that I was making with this is that our culture is not a culture that supports learning. Our culture is not a culture that supports learning from painful situations or from mistakes. or from things not working out. Rather, all culture tells us that if you're going to do something different, if you're not going to follow the status quo, if you're going to do anything that doesn't align with what everyone else is doing, you better immediately get good results or you are a failure. You are bad. You are wrong. You are incompetent on some level. You are worse than all the rest of us. Right? Our culture does not support learning from our mistakes. Our culture does not learn support learning from our outcomes because again, same thing. Even if you're doing what everyone else is doing and you're not getting good results, culture doesn't support saying, "Okay, why are we not getting good results? What what do we think is going to happen and what is actually happening and what's the difference?" Culture does not support 
learning that there could be a better or different way. Culture supports same. You just be the same, do what everyone else is doing, be the same as everyone else, do what everyone else is doing, and if you don't get good results, you are the failure. There is something wrong with you. If you try and do something different and you don't get good results immediately, you are a failure and there's something wrong with you. So again, we are not taught how to look for actual pragmatic results. We are taught to look for what is everyone else doing and what does everyone else approve of and how can I fit myself into that. And then we are not taught that if what everyone else is doing doesn't work for us, doesn't feel good, doesn't lead to the results that we want, we are not taught how to try different things, how to go for different things, how to fail, how to figure things out as we go. We're taught that if you are going to do something different and it doesn't immediately work out, you are bad, you are wrong, you are shameful. Because you left the group, you're not good enough, so that's already going to stimulate that you're not good enough, you're a failure, there's something wrong with you. If you can't make normal work, and then doing something different that doesn't immediately lead to better results, you're going to feel like shit about yourself. Because, again, self-protective mechanism is saying you did something different, it didn't even give you good results. You're the worst. Go back and do what everyone else is doing. That's what that shame voice is trying to get you to do. It's always just trying to get you to conform because it believes that being in that conforming is the best thing to do for your survival. Okay, so what this all means is that when we are in a situation where we are trying to figure out what the next thing to do in our life is, or we are trying to figure out how to heal our bodies, or we're trying to figure out how to find a career that would actually make us happy, or we're trying to figure out how we need to be in relationships so that we can actually have functional relationships, because either what we were given as normal hasn't worked for us, or right, we have tried that, we've done everything we knew to do to try to fit in, and we get to a point where we realize this isn't going to work for me, I can't do this, I'm not getting the same results as everyone else, whatever. We're automatically going to look for um, the answer, the, res the, the change, the solution that's going to get us the most approval. We're going to look for what is the right thing to do by the standards of everyone around me, right? And a lot of us will then start to really try to find like a happy medium, like a middle ground between us trying to do something different and get what we want while also remaining acceptable to the group and to the tribe, which usually leads to neither of these things. Right? We will try to augment our diet in some way that makes us feel a little bit better in our bodies, but that doesn't you know, rock the boat too much. So we'll pick a trend. We'll pick a dieting trend. We'll do something different. So it's not how our caregivers ate. It's not how everyone at the office eats. But it's something we can say, but everyone is doing this. This is the new trending diet. And so... It might not be normal, it might not be what you're doing, but at least I can say, but look, there are all these other people who are doing it. It's a trending thing. You see? And then we usually don't actually feel that much better on the trending diet. We feel a little bit better, maybe. And then sometimes we become you know, fanatical about it and it becomes our new identity and all of this because we've left normal. We left how we were identifying before and now we need a new identity. Now we need a new group. Now we need a new thing to tell us what the right answer is. And so we just jump to being, you know, I'm a keto person or I'm a vegan or I'm a whatever. And that becomes our new, you know, social identity. And that's how we make all of our decisions. And that's how we figure everything out. And that's how we figure out what right is. A lot of people who leave cults will go and find another cult. People who leave religions will go and find another religion. People leave academia and go and find another 
you know, really intellectual group. Why do we do that? Because we can admit that what we were doing before wasn't working. But the idea of just going off on our own and figuring it out on our own or f finding that there's a gray area or not finding a new group in or to be a part of is really challenging and really hard. Yeah? So a lot of us, again, when we say I'm looking for the right thing to do, we are often saying I'm looking for the group of people. I'm looking for the leader. I'm looking for the community. I'm looking for the ideology. I'm looking for the religion. I'm looking for the blueprint of what the right way to live life is that's going to give me the answers to all of my questions as I move forward and have all of these different questions, right? This is part of the reason why religion is so popular and so um, enticing because it gives us a blueprint so that we don't, so as we go through this life, which is very complicated, and very filled with pain and filled with decisions where we're not going to know what the right thing to do is and we're going to have to fail and we're going to have to figure it out as we go. We don't want that. We don't want to live in that world. And again, we've not been given the tools to learn from reality. We've not been given the tools to figure things out as we go. So we deeply feel like if we don't have a blueprint, if we don't have a group of people to follow, if we haven't found the people who are right, that we can then model our lives after, we're hopeless and we're overwhelmed and we're scared and we feel like we'll never be able to figure it out because that's how culture sets us up. Culture sets us up to say, if you want to be safe, if you want to have good results in life, find the people who have the right answer and then just do what everyone in that group is doing. Find the group that's right and be like them. But the problem is there is no group that is right all the time. There is no philosophy, there is no way of being where everyone, we have all the answers, we have it all figured out, where you can go and say, I'll just read the book and for every one of my circumstances, the answer is going to be in the book. That if I just follow along enough and fit in enough, I will be safe. Yeah? But again, we all have that deep program that tells us the way to be safe, the way to find your answers when you're scared, when you're lost, when you're not getting the results that you want, is to find the group that's right and do what that group is doing. We're not trained to learn from reality. And that is why I think so many of us, again, we live our entire lives in these loops of doing the same behaviors over and over again, shifting from group to group to group, finding some success and then, but not full success and never really figuring out even why we're in pain or what we need to do to fix it. Because we aren't taught to look for results we aren't taught to look for reality. We're taught to look for approval. We're taught to look for acceptance. We're taught to look for the group that has the answers that I can fit myself into so that I will be safe and have access to all the answers moving forward. Right? So we all seek that approval because deep down we believe that the more we are approved of, the better results we're going to get in life. So when we shift from what is the right thing to do, what we're really saying is I'm acknowledging that my nervous system, just like everyone else's nervous system, is programmed to believe that when I'm in pain or when I'm struggling or when there's something I don't know, the best way to get out of that pain, the best way to figure out what to do is to fit in, to fit in with my generalized other, to fit in with my new group, to fit in with whoever has the right answers. And if I just follow the protocol enough, whatever that protocol is, it's gonna get me the results that I want. Okay, and sometimes the protocol does. Sometimes the medicine works. 
Sometimes what other people say is the right thing to do really is the best thing to do. It pragmatically works. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it isn't. Sometimes it's the opposite of what we need or what we want. Sometimes what works for other people does not work for us. So what we need to be able to do is shift from what's the right thing to do, meaning what's going to get me approved of, into, okay, I need to start to assess where my actual pain is. I need to start to assess what hurts about my job. What doesn't work for me? What are the component aspects of this way of working that is making me feel the way that I am feeling? Learning emotional intelligence is a big part of figuring out what the best thing to do is. Because again, in the right thing to do, most of us are walking around feeling like I feel bad because I'm failing. I feel bad because I'm not fitting in. I feel bad because I'm failing to do what I should be doing. I feel bad because I am inherently unworthy. I am lacking something. I am shitty. I am not good enough. People don't like me. I'm not doing the right thing. When we're in those shame and blame and guilt cycles, we know we are disconnected from reality. We know that that self-protective mechanism that says the best way to have pleasure and to survive is to fit in, is now looking for all the ways in which you don't fit in to try to get you to conform, thinking that that's what's going to make you happy. But a lot of the time, it is not the, the fact that you're not fitting in that is making you unhappy. Right? It is literally the 9 to 5 thing does not work for your biology, does not work for how your mind works. The way that you were raised to eat, the cultural diet that everyone around you eats, does not feel good in your body. That's why you don't feel good. You don't feel good because the way that culture tells you you're supposed to spend your leisure time or the way that culture tells you you're supposed to have uh, intimate relationships does not feel good for you. It's not that you're failing. It's not that there's something wrong with you. It's not that you're not fitting in that you are in pain. You are in pain because the results that you're getting from the things you've been told you are supposed to do hurt. So to be able to like even have that awareness that when we're going into shame, blame, guilt, I'm not good enough, I am in pain because I'm not fitting in, looking for where you're failing to fit in, looking for where you're not acceptable, looking for where people are rejecting you. If you can even catch that, like, that is a coping mechanism. That's, you're in pain, I don't know why I'm in pain, and then that self-protective mechanism is coming up and saying, I know why you're in pain, because you're not fitting in. Because that was, again, right, that very first program we all got. Pain is a result of not being accepted. Pleasure is a result of being accepted. So we all have that trigger deep inside that when we're in pain, we automatically start to look for what's wrong with me? What am I doing wrong? How am I failing? Where am I not fitting in? Who do I need to be approved of? Who do I need to change myself to be good enough for? That's going to be that initial instinct. Where am I failing to be good enough? When the real reality is we need to ask ourselves, no, what is actually hurting? What's really actually hurting me? And sometimes it's not even necessarily our circumstances. Sometimes what's really hurting us is unprocessed emotional pain. Like we just really went through um, having caregivers that didn't support us and it didn't feel good and we never learned how to emotionally process that pain so when it comes up when our sadness and our grief and our upset at our caregivers comes up we don't know how to process it and we immediately go into nitpicking ourselves because that's how we know to make the pain go away yeah we're looking for the right thing to do how do I make the pain go away by doing what I need to do to fit in so then again, that's why I'm saying in real reality, a lot of the time, fitting in isn't going to be the answer. 
doing what our caregivers taught us to do isn't going to make us feel better. Being able to be as successful at the career we think we need to be successful at, thinking we need to just work harder on these relationships, whatever it is, it's never going to bring us happiness because it's not what's best for us. It's not the actual best thing. What we were trained to do and what we were trained to be as right by society standards is not what is best by reality standards. So learning how to differentiate between these two things, again, starts with how everything starts. Self-love, having compassion for yourself and curiosity that when you're in shame and blame and guilt and looking for the right thing to do, what's the right thing to do, who is the right person to follow, what, 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 we need to stop. We need to recognize that's childhood coping mechanism. I'm in pain. The pain means that I'm being rejected. If I'm being rejected, I'm going to die. So how do I fit myself in to what would be good? That's the first thing we have to recognize in ourselves. When we're looking for how do I fit in, how do, just how do I fix myself so that I'm not so different and bad and wrong and broken, that's our first trigger that we're in looking for the right thing instead of looking for the best thing. And we need to comfort ourselves. And we need to regulate ourselves. And we need to be on our own sides. And we need to say, okay, I'm feeling pain, but it's not my fault. I'm feeling pain, but it's not because I'm not good enough. It's not because I don't fit in. It's not because I'm a failure on some level. I am feeling pain. That's why these voices are there. They're trying to protect me. But the answer is not going to be to figure out how to fit in more. The answer needs to first be, why am I in pain? Where is the pain actually coming from? Right? So it's not that I'm failing at my job. It's, why does the job hurt? It's not that I'm failing at the relationships. It's, why do the relationships hurt? It's not that I'm failing at being good enough. It's, what are my actual emotional needs right now? It's not that I'm failing. It's, if my body is hurting, or there's something going on with my body, it's not that I'm failing. I'm not just being bad at being healthy. I have needs that are not being understood and are not being met. That's why I'm in pain. So this is the first thing to shift from what is the right thing to do to what is the best thing to do is having compassion for ourselves when we're in pain, that that pain is not coming because we are failing to fit in. And then we start to look for where the actual pain is coming from. What is actually hurting? And this is really challenging. Because again, to decondition ourselves from automatically assuming, I have to work this kind of job. I have to be in this kind of relationship. I have to stay in this religion. I have to eat this way. I have to find a group of people. To condition ourselves out of that, to be able to see that there might be other ways of being that are better, that work better, that feel better than what would get us approved of by our generalized other is really hard. Because again, we're not just conditioned that the way that we've been raised is the right way. We're also conditioned that every other way is wrong, is bad, is shameful, is harmful, is evil. At least we're not like those people, right? So learning how to say, what if this way of being that I was taught isn't the right way? And then what if I'm going to have to do something that has been deemed by my generalized other as being bad and wrong and shameful in order to feel good? That's really hard and scary to do. And to be able to sense that this new way feels good, even though it's getting us a rejection, is hard to sense. Because again, that protective mechanism that's going to make you feel bad for doing anything that's outside of what would get you approved of is going to be really loud. So to be able to even listen to the pain-pleasure mechanism, 
that's saying keep going down this path even though it's not what everyone would approve of it's different it maybe even again doesn't get you good results right in the beginning this is the path to follow it's very challenging right and then to follow a path where you're going to do different things and you're going to fail it's not going to go how you thought it was going to go you're going to try something different and it's not going to give you the results it maybe sometimes will make things worse that is going to be a part of your path finding what works for you is going to involve failing it's going to involve doing something different than what you know to do and not getting a good result right away it's going to involve making mistakes doing things you thought were going to give you one result and then they give you a different result and learning how to say okay don't give up don't just turn around and go back don't use that as proof that there is no other better way that you just have to do what everyone else is doing but to say okay what did i learn from that what did that teach me what can i take from that and then use that to help inform my next new different step that's huge radical self love to be able to love yourself enough that when your new different thing doesn't get you good results and you feel like a total piece of shit failure who's doing everything wrong cuz again that part of you that's trying to protect you to get you to go back to doing what everyone else is doing now has a bunch of ammo it's like see what you did something different and you were wrong it didn't work you clearly are inadequate you clearly do suck you clearly are not good enough you clearly are making a huge mistake go back do what everyone else was doing what were you even thinking to be able to say okay i hear you i love you thank you for trying to protect me thank you for trying to protect me by sending me back to where i came from but i'm not going to go there maybe this didn't work out and maybe people will look at me and think i'm stupid or wrong or bad and it hurt but i'm willing to keep going i'm willing to learn from it i'm willing to look at it and say okay Why didn't it go how I thought it was going to go? What did I just learn about reality that I didn't know before? How can I use this to inform my next step? And then accepting this last bit of living for what the best thing is means that we have to let go of the idea that there's a perfect thing. And this I think is the hardest for all of us. that accepting that a lot of the time when we're in pain and we're moving towards a life of our desires or we're doing whatever we're trying to do to change what's not working we need to accept that we don't have perfect resources we don't have perfect access we don't have perfect awareness there is no perfect step there is no perfect path there is no way forward that isn't going to involve failure that isn't going to involve involve pain that isn't going to involve making mistakes that there is no right perfect thing that we need to learn to work with the actual circumstances we're in right so we're changing our diet but we don't have perfect access to perfect food We don't have perfect access to the most ideal version of the diet we wish we could do. So we do what we can and we let it be good enough. We modify the diet to fit our budget, to fit what we have access to, and we allow ourselves to get the good results we can get even if they aren't perfect results. We allow ourselves to make little changes to our relationships to take steps towards better boundaries or less doing things for people that require a big self sacrifice on our own and realizing that we're not going to be able to have perfect boundaries right at the beginning we're not going to be able to say okay 
this is what I want to do, this is what feels perfect for me and best for me, and everyone just has to adjust. We're not going to be able to do that. We're going to have to take a step. We may be in a situation where we know we have trauma from our childhoods because of our caregivers and we're trying to heal, but we can't afford to live on our own. And so we have to be able to start to do some of this internal work, even in a triggering environment. And we realize it's not perfect. And we realize it's not going to be complete, total transformation in six weeks. It's gonna, we're going to keep getting triggered, and it's not going to be the perfect environment. But we can do what we can do, right? This is the biggest thing about finding what the best thing is is we accept where we are in our reality. We accept that it's not perfect. We accept that it's not ideal. Because that is always going to be the reality. We're never going to have ideal perfect circumstances. In order to create the things we want to create or to get out of the pain that we're in, it's always going to be a messy, imperfect, working with what we actually have situation. And we cannot let that perfectionism stop us from taking the steps we need to take. We have to be able to say, this next step I'm going to take is not going to be perfect. It's not everything. It's not going to fix everything. It's not ideal. It is what I have access to, though. And my only two real options are work with the less than ideal situation or do nothing because a lot of us are like gonna sit and wait until it's perfect before we will take a step we're gonna say I need the circumstances to be better I need them to I need to be more prepared I need to have more resources I need to move out first I need to whatever before I start my healing journey before I start setting boundaries before I, I need to know exactly what my next career move is going to be before I start adjusting the one I have and that means in real reality that most of us will just never take a step. Because that perfect circumstance is never going to exist. We need to accept where we are and what we can do from where we are is the best thing. And we need to just do that. And we, like I say, we need to accept that it is not perfect, accept that it is never going to be perfect, but it is better than doing nothing. It is better than waiting for a perfect circumstance that is never going to happen. Getting on the path of best is so much about letting go of the perfection and waiting for it to be perfect before we will do it. And thinking that if it's not perfect, we're not going to get good results. We have to be willing to take steps within our imperfect conditions because it's always going to be an imperfect time. It's always going to be an imperfect condition. But that doesn't mean that you can't make it better. We need to look for better instead of looking for perfect. And letting the fact that perfect is never going to exist be the reason we don't step forward into better. Okay, so when we're in shame, blame, guilt, that's our trigger. You're in pain about something. And your childhood wound is telling you the reason you're in pain is because you don't fit in. So figure out where you're failing to fit in. And that's easy to do in our, our life when everyone is going to be able to tell us, well, here's why you suck and here's why you don't fit in. And blah, blah. We need to be able to recognize that as like, no, I'm in pain. I really am in pain. There is something not right here, but it's not that I suck and it's not that I'm failing. So compassion for myself. Next is we look for where is the actual pain? What is actually happening? Where are the results that I'm getting that I'm being told should be this way or should be that or I'm fitting in or whatever, but it doesn't actually feel good? Then we start to say, okay, what could I start to do different? And we allow ourselves to take steps and we allow ourselves to fail and we allow ourselves to be judged and criticized by others and we realize that we don't die because of it. We realize, like, we have to see ourselves through that a lot of the time. We have to see ourselves through being rejected and going forward anyways in order to find the best thing and not the right thing. 
We understand there is no perfect group. There is no perfect people. We're never going to find a way of being that's all figured out for us. We're going to have to figure it out as we go. We learn how to learn from our failures. We learn how to say, yeah, I failed. It didn't go how I thought it was going to go. So what can I learn from that instead of giving up? And we learn to take steps in our imperfect circumstances. We accept that it's never going to be perfect. And we do it anyways. This is what living for the best thing to do is. Just where am I actually at? Why am I actually in pain? What do I actually need? And what is the actual practical step I can take from this place? And what can I learn from that? This is how we improve our lives. Because there is no right way to live. There is no always and never best thing. We're going to have to figure it out as we go. And sometimes doing what is best doesn't get us acceptance. And that's a hard thing for our nervous system to learn, but it's a very important thing for our nervous system to learn. So when we're aware of it, we can be more able to do the things we need to do to step outside of what is right so we can step into what is best. Okay? So again, if you want more stuff like this, come join the Mystery School. This is basically all it is. It's learning these tools of emotional regulation and awareness and slowly being able to do different things even though we're getting rejected and all that stuff. And until then, until I see you again, have a fantastic day, week, month, whenever I see you. And yeah, you're the best. There's nothing wrong with you. You're not failing. Okay? Okay. Mwah. See you later.